This is the YMCA submaximal cycle ergometer test. This test estimates one aerobic capacity by identifying steady state heart rates in two different stages, which ultimately gives us information that can help us more accurately prescribe exercise for our client. Even though this test is submaximal, as before any exercise testing, pre-exercise heart rate and blood pressure must be measured. See the tutorials for proper techniques in measuring heart rate and blood pressures. If there are any indications against exercise, then the client should be referred to his or her doctor before participating. Since walking is the most common, most familiar form of locomotion in most people, exercise testing on the treadmill is the most preferred modality. In some individuals, however, they may have limitations that would keep them from performing an exercise test on a treadmill, and so the cycle ergometer is a viable option. As with any submaximal exercise testing for which the aim is to predict maximal levels, there is error in making these predictions, and so it's important to be aware of this. This error is discussed in greater detail in our lectures. Once pre-exercise heart rate and blood pressures have been measured and everything is in the normal range, we are ready to begin the test. To conduct this test, we need a stationary bike that can increase resistance in a half kilogram increments up to three and a half kilograms, a metronome if the RPM dial is not available, blood pressure cuff and stethoscope, and a rating of perceived exertion scale. Typically, the Borg 6 to 20 scale. Chest strap heart rate monitors are often used, but we will practice taking heart rates manually. Before having your client mount the bike, we have to first make sure they are fitted on it properly, and this begins with adjusting the seat height. Have your client stand next to the bike, and noting the height of the hips towards the iliac crest, adjust the seat level. Be sure the knob is securely fitted into the stem to the seat to avoid any kind of accident. Have your client mount the bike and ask if they are comfortable, then have them take some pedal rotations to note the angles of the knee. There should be a slight bend in the knee on the downward phase of the pedal revolution. Be sure the handlebars are adjusted accordingly. Your client should not be too far forward, nor should be too far back, but in a comfortable upright position. Set the metronome if needed and have the participant pedal at a rate of 50 revolutions per minute. If there is a display on the cycle ergometer that can be used instead. Set the workload, which is standardized, at half a kilogram of resistance. In this case, it is adjusted with a turning knob since it is a pendulum ergometer. Fit the blood pressure cuff on your client as they continue to pedal. Be ready to take heart rate. Each stage is three minutes long, and heart rate should be taken during the last 15 to 30 seconds of each stage. And blood pressure and RPE is taken at the end of the third minute of each stage. Remember, the goal is to achieve a steady state heart rate between 110 and 150 beats per minute for two consecutive stages. The rationale for this is explained in the introduction of this tutorial. As we move forward to the end of the first minute, it's time to take heart rate. Notice how the client's hand is resting in the arm of the test administrator and not grasping the handlebar of the stationary bike. Take a 10 second count and multiply this by six, since there are six 10 second intervals in one minute, and this will give you your client's heart rate in beats per minute. Be sure to communicate with your client and periodically ask them how they're doing. Remember, don't ask leading questions like, are your calves on fire or are you ready to stop? Just simply ask them if they're feeling okay or if they need anything. We move forward to the end of minute two in stage one, and we take heart rates in the same manner as we did before. And this time our heart rate is 92 beats per minute. We now fast forward to the end of the third minute, which is the busiest point of the stage, because not only do we have to take heart rates, we also have to take blood pressure, RPE, and we have to assess whether or not our client is in steady state. The most important data point we need, however, is heart rate. We always measure heart rate before blood pressure and RPE. Be it known that heart rate always takes precedence over the other two. For the third minute of this first stage, our heart rate is 94. Now that the heart rate has been taken, we measure blood pressure. Notice the client's arm is resting in the test administrator's arm. This is the same practice that we use with heart rate. We allow the client to grasp the handlebar while we measure these heart rates and blood pressures, we can get interference through movement and sound vibrating up from the bike and into the arm. By cradling the arm, we avoid this and it makes it easier to assess these variables. 
After blood pressure is collected, record the data and then show the client the rating of perceived exertion scale. Once you've recorded everything and all is normal, you make an assessment to proceed to the next stage. Since the minute 2 heart rate was 92 beats per minute, minute 3 heart rate was 94 beats per minute, that's less than a 5 beat difference and tells us that our client is in steady state. Had the third minute heart rate been over 5 beats per minute difference from the second minute heart rate, then we would have had to extend the stage into a fourth minute. Since our client's heart rate was 94 beats per minute, we looked at our flow chart and under the appropriate column we see we need to add one kilogram of resistance for stage two. For whatever diagram you're using, just be sure that you follow the appropriate columns for the given steady state heart rates that the client achieves. Turn the pendulum so that the total resistance now points to 1.5 kilograms or if you're using a weighted pan, add the appropriate weight to the pan of the cycle ergometer. Be sure that the client is maintaining the 50 revolutions per minute rate and the stage proceeds as normal. We move forward to measuring heart rate at minute one of the second stage, which we'll say is 105 beats per minute, and then again at minute two of the second stage, which we'll say is 119 beats per minute. We now transition to minute three and our heart rate is 121 beats per minute. Since this is within the five beat range of the minute two heart rate of 119 beats per minute, we consider this steady state. It's also between 110 and 150 beats per minute, and so we can use it as a data point when we calculate our estimates of VO2 max. Remember, we need a steady state heart rate from two consecutive stages, so we need to proceed to stage three. Be sure to take blood pressure and rating of perceived exertion before increasing the workload. As mentioned in the introductory slides of this module, heart rates do not dictate workloads past stage two. Remember, don't ever switch columns after stage two. Even though my client's heart rate was above 100 beats per minute, I'm still going to stay in the workload that was initially set for stage two. You can see this with the arrows on the flowchart diagram here. So now we need to increase the resistance up to two kilograms, which means we are going to add a half a kilogram of resistance to the flywheel. Once complete, check to make sure the resistance is correct, that your client is maintaining the 50 RPM requirement, and keep communication with the client to make sure everything is okay. We now move forward to the end of minute one in stage three, where our heart rate is 128 beats per minute. And moving forward to minute two of stage three, and our heart rate here is 135 beats per minute. And finally, minute three of the third stage rolls around and we can take heart rate again. And it's 137 beats per minute, which is only a two beat difference from the minute two heart rate which is 135 beats per minute. So we know we're in steady state and we do not have to extend this stage to a fourth minute. We can now take our final blood pressure. And once finished with blood pressure, we can take our final rating of perceived exertion. Since we now have steady state heart rates from two consecutive stages within 110 and 150 beats per minute, we're finished with the test. Bring the resistance back down to a half kilogram and allow your client to continue pedaling at a self-selected rate for two or three minutes to cool down. We followed the YMCA protocol with three columns for this test and that's what you see here. Our client was 18 years old. She weighed 94 pounds. We're using the formula 220 minus age to estimate maximal heart rate for our client, which in this case 220 minus 18 is 202 beats per minute. This is her estimated maximal heart rate. You remember we started at a half a kilogram resistance and this is standardized for everybody in stage one. Stage one heart rates for our client were 89 beats per minute, 92 beats per minute, and 94 beats per minute. 
Her blood pressure was 124 over 80, with a rating of perceived exertion of 8. We then had to decide how much resistance to put on the wheel based on her heart rate at the end of the third minute. Using this flow chart, her heart rate was 94 beats per minute, and she fell between 86 and 100 beats per minute, which means we added one kilogram resistance, and this corresponds to a workload of 450 kilogram meters per minute. Our client's stage two heart rates were 105 beats per minute in minute one, 119 in minute two, and 121 in minute three. You recall since there was less than a five beat difference between heart rates in minutes two and three, this was steady state. So we measured blood pressure, which was 132 over 82, and she had an RPE of 11. We then added half a kilogram to bring up the workload to 600 kilogram meters per minute, and her heart rate in minute one of stage three was 128 beats per minute. Minute two was 135 beats per minute, and then the third minute, was 137 beats per minute. Again, this was steady state, so there's no need to extend the stage by a minute. Her blood pressure in this last stage was 140 over 83, and her RPE was 13. We now have steady state heart rates from two consecutive stages, and we'll need to know that stage two corresponds to a workload of 450 kilogram meters per minute, and stage three corresponds to a workload of 600 kilogram meters per minute. We then need to find these two workloads on our graph. We need to mark them so that we're making sure we're plotting heart rates on the appropriate workloads. Our stage two steady state heart rate is 121 beats per minute. So we'll follow the line straight up from the 450 workload to the 120 beat mark. And then slightly above that, we'll make our point. Our stage three steady state heart rate was 137 beats per minute. We do the same thing, find the 600 kilogram meter per minute workload Follow the line up to the 135 beat mark, and just slightly above that, we'll make our point. Now that we have our heart rates plotted, we need to draw a line that corresponds to our client's estimated maximal heart rate. Remember, we used the formula 220 minus age to estimate our client's maximal heart rate, which came out to 202 beats per minute. You can use a straight edge of any kind to draw your lines. I'll use this extra clipboard I have lying around. So I see the 200 mark, and I'll draw a line all the way across the top of the page, just above that point. Now all we do is take straight edge and line it up with the heart rates that you have plotted from the two consecutive stages, and draw your line all the way up through the estimated heart rate max. The final step is to put your straight edge vertically across the sheet at the submaximal and maximal heart rate intersection point. Draw a line from the top all the way down to the bottom. Make sure this line is parallel with all the other vertical lines on the graph. This vertical line now tells us where estimated maximal values are. And as you can see, our client has an estimated maximal workload of 1,050 kilogram meters per minute. Her estimated VO2 max in absolute terms is 2.4 liters per minute. Further lab work and class lectures go over in greater detail how to interpret and convert these values to be used in assessing fitness and generating exercise prescriptions for your clients. So now you know why we conduct the YMCA cycle ergometer test. You know what equipment is needed to conduct this test. And you understand the proper techniques and procedures for conducting the YMCA test.